It's been a hot topic in Orange Beach for years. Should the city form its own school system? Well, a meeting was held last night to discuss that idea. About 350 people turned out to learn more about the proposal. The money to fund the independent school system would come from the city's tourism industry. The proposal outlines an increase in property taxes for locals, lodging taxes for tourists, and sales tax for everyone. Some locals have mixed feelings about splitting from Baldwin County. I have rental property and I'm here. One thing that upsets me is I don't want my customers to have to pay more money for rental tax. They already pay 11%. So I believe in paying forward. I believe it's each generation's responsibility to provide for the children of that generation. <laughs> Right now, there are two proposals for the school's location near the entrance of the sportsplex or near the wharf. The vote on a referendum to raise taxes to fund the system is set for September 23rd. The special election to fill the District 2 City Council seat in Pritchard is headed to a runoff. Six candidates were looking to replace Erlene Martin-Harris, who resigned. City officials say 320 voters cast ballots. Severia Campbell-Morris and Carlton Wallace got the most votes, but not enough to avoid a runoff. They will face off in a special runoff election. It's set for Tuesday, October 7th. There were three big primary races in Florida, Democrats and Republicans. In high-definition television. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 10 News on this Wednesday morning. It's now 6.38. I'm Sarah Wall. The city of Spanish Fort is still working on getting emergency sirens installed. The city received a grant in June of 2013 for five emergency sirens. The main purpose of the sirens is to alert Spanish Fort residents about tornadoes. The sirens were supposed to be in place in the early spring, but there have been some issues securing all of the locations. We have four of the five secured, and the fifth one is at Five Rivers on the Causeway, state land, and that's um, nearly complete. We're told the city is a few weeks away from getting final approval. The sirens are expected to be installed sometime this fall. Next year. No kidding, not a combo I would have put together. What do you know? It's now 6.45. The Canada 55-plus games are today, and all eyes will be on one particular athlete. Meet Florence Storch. The 101-year-old will be participating in the javelin throwing competition. She picked up the hobby 15 years ago while volunteering for the games. No one else has signed up for the event, so she put her name down. She says her age doesn't set her apart from other athletes. You're not too old to compete, because age is just a number anyway. So I don't have much fussing around about my age. Storch is vying for the gold, and we do wish her the best of luck. That is impressive. All right, a group of senior citizens prove it's never too late to be a daredevil. The four, all who are in their 80s, decided to take the 100-foot plunge at Wyndham Seacoast Fun Park in Maine. When they asked, were asked why, they said it simply looked fun. The daring seniors included a Marine and a World War II pilot. All in their 80s, you in said their that part. 80s, yes. That's awesome. You know, and, and when you really look at those pictures, they're on their stomachs. Yeah. Like they're, okay, straight, like the, the ground is coming right up at you, right? <laughs> I think that is Daredevil A++, Matt Barentine. <laughs> Life is for living, guys. Good. There you go, Matt. Good for them. That is pretty awesome. Life is for the kids to get out there to their school buses as well. And the good